I'm Dr. Robert Menz. I'm a heart failure cardiologist at Duke University, and it's an honor to be able to join you from ESC Congress 2023 here in Amsterdam. I was delighted to be able to share the results of the HeartFID primary trial data here at ESC this year. To give you a little bit of background, HeartFID explored patients with HEFREF with iron deficiency. Well, we know some of the prior data have demonstrated how common iron deficiency is in patients with heart failure. We also know that giving oral iron is ineffective to help improve exercise capacity in patients with heart failure and iron deficiency. Some important recent data have demonstrated that IV iron, in contrast to oral iron, can improve quality of life and functional status in patients with HEFREF and iron deficiency. In addition, the AFFIRM AHF trial has suggested potential reductions in heart failure hospitalization with IV iron in this population. However, there was an unmet need to better understand the long-term safety and efficacy of giving IV iron in specifically intravenous ferric carboxymaltose, or FCM, in patients with HEFREF with iron deficiency. We therefore designed and executed the HeartFed double-blind placebo-controlled event-driven randomized trial. This was a trial in 3,065 patients with HEFREF with iron deficiency. We define iron deficiency as a ferritin less than 100 or 100 to 300 with a TSAT less than 20%. This was a broad population with chronic HEFREF with ejection fraction of 40% or less. Placebo controlled and looked at active treatment with intravenous FCM. Patients were given two doses at baseline and then every six months as needed to replete iron stores. We follow a patient over the long-term duration of 1.9 years. Our primary endpoint was a hierarchical composite. So it looked at 12-month all-cause mortality and heart failure hospitalizations, and then evaluated six-month, six-minute walk distance. A key secondary endpoint looked at time to first event of cardiovascular death in heart failure hospitalizations. In our trial, again as noted, we recruited over 3,000 patients. We had just over a third women, 11% black individuals. And in this diverse population, we found that FCM led to a modest benefit across this hierarchical endpoint. We saw a numerical reduction in all-cause mortality, fewer heart failure hospitalizations, and a modest improvement in six-minute walk distance at six months. In terms of this primary endpoint, we narrowly missed statistical significance based on a higher p-value threshold. This was needed to meet a p-value of less than 0.01, and our p-value was 0.019. So just narrowly missing, but importantly, as we looked at the totality of evidence, it demonstrated that FCM was safe, had these modest benefits on the primary endpoint. And for that top secondary endpoint, we also saw a numerical reduction in events that didn't reach statistical significance. Importantly, to further contextualize these data, we had pre-specified a pooled analysis with ferrocarboxymaltose prior studies in HEFREF with iron deficiency. So we pooled the HeartFID data with the AFFIRM AHF and CONFIRM HF trials and looked at key endpoints of clinical composites of cardiovascular death with total cardiovascular hospitalizations and heart failure hospitalizations. In that pre-specified analysis, we saw a 14% reduction in the composite with cardiovascular hospitalizations and a 13% reduction uh, in a, the composite with heart failure hospitalizations, with the latter not meeting our pre-specified level of statistical significance. So for the routine clinicians, as we think, how do we translate these data into clinical practice? We know that IV ferric carboxymaltose in patients with HEFREF and iron deficiency improves exercise capacity and quality of life we had the recent AFFIRM AHF trial data supporting a potential benefit on a reduction in heart failure hospitalization. And now we have the largest IV iron study that shows a numerical reduction in each of the component clinical events and outcomes on six minute walk favoring FCM as well. So I think this offers us another tool in our toolkit as we manage patients with HEFREF in that group with iron deficiency. It's not another pill to take every day, but rather infusions that can be given quite easily in either clinic or in the hospital setting to improve patients' clinical course. Importantly, patient-reported outcomes or PROs do matter. 
In our trial, we did not collect additional quality of life measures, but the prior studies have really demonstrated improvements in measures like the Kansas City Cardiomyopathy Questionnaire, or KCCQ, as well as measures that we also looked at for patient uh, function and feel endpoints like the six minute walk distance in the HeartFed program. So bringing this all together, I think we have now multiple clinical studies suggesting potential clinical benefit uh, and guidelines that give us recommendations not only to test for iron deficiency in heart failure, but to use therapies with intravenous iron to improve exercise capacity, quality of life, and signals around potential important benefits for heart failure hospitalization. Thanks so much for the opportunity to go through these exciting data with you all. We're very grateful to all of our investigators and the participants who participated in this clinical trial. Thanks so much and I look forward to seeing you at future ESC Congresses.